Okay, so now all that's left, I have the placement and the coloring. Now all that's left are little effects. And so instead of just really flat digital color, I can give it that kind of comic book printed texture using layer styles. I like that on the lettering there. I like that so much I can steal that and put it onto this section here, even though it won't show up all that much on the black. So how do I steal an effect? I make a duplicate of the one with the effect, and then I just move, drag and drop the effect onto the new layer, and then delete the copy. So now you can see it's on the purple as well, and on the black. Do not uh, have any kind of just full area of solid black if you can help it. In your design, it prints better on photo printers to have a little bit of texture, or a little bit of gradation. So for this solid black, I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to duplicate just that bevel and emboss effect and paste it onto here. And then I'm actually going to set this whole layer and try it to be multiply. See if I like that or see if I like the, the extra white or normal. I wish I could not have that contour, so I, I'm going to try to give it an inner glow. That should help temper some of that. Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> some of that outline. But to do that, I would have to rasterize the layer style. Okay, now that I've rasterized the layer style, I can do the inner glow. And I'll hopefully just work from the edges. This is just on the, the shadow layer. So again, this is using everything we've done. Put it at a high opacity. You see how it's getting rid of that shadow. on soft light. And then I can do an outer glow as well. And keep it a little bit tighter. So maybe not. I tried doing it with an inner shadow. <coughs> That lightens. It is tight. That helps. And then an inner glow, same thing. Really bring out that texture more. Okay, I like that. And if I like that, I can bring that to this. I can make a duplicate, steal those effects, drag them up to here. Oh, but I don't want to replace, oh, I want to put it back, the bevel and emboss it. Well, before, before I copy it over, I wanted to rasterize it 
the layer style, and then bring that effect on. So many different things we can do. There it is. All right. And then the last one I might want to play with that effect is this background. I've got that layered up so I can combine those two layers. Let's see if that changed it at all. Did a little bit. So instead of combining them, I'll just add the bevel and emboss effect to the top. Yeah, I like it on the top better than on the bottom. There we go. And it gives, just gives it a little bit of punch. <coughs> okay. Looks good. It's readable. Makes sense. Um, because I have rasterized most of these things, the last thing I might do is just pull it up a little bit. So I'm going to take, hold down command and select all the layers that are rasterized and are just the text and the swoop and then transform them and then distort just by tugging up at one end to help fit the shape a little bit more. Even though they're separate layers, I'm not warping them. That's something I can play with. Do I like that better? Squinting? Yes, I do. Okay, and then I'm just going to fix the space underneath. Just by lassoing the areas I know have to be taken out behind these letter forms. And then I can move that selection behind both. Very good. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to save it. That's my PSD file. It has all the different options. Carl assignment 8 poster layout. And now I'll just show you um, some little end print ready stuff just to see what you like. All right, so this is my trick. I have that white border on top locked. I'm going to keep that. But then every other layer, I'm going to merge. Command E. Right? So it's all right there. This is not permanent. I'm not going to replace my Photoshop file this way. That way I've got all these different features, all these layer styles, all these vectors, everything's now just one raster layer. What that allows me to do is use an action. So go to Actions, and instead of Carl's color separations, which I could use in the background and stuff. I already have it in, in subtle ways. I'm going to use, let's see, my customized effects. And these are like my favorite ways of, of messing with the color and the contrast. And the one I like that kind of does a bunch of them at once is called Full Run-Up F9 to View. So you're going to click that cassette and press play. It won't mess up your original, but you will have to hit return a lot.
and it will make a lot of different variations. Some will be desaturated, but you'll see what I mean. This is more a photo technique. But once your, your poster is finished, this will just show you all the different ways it can be pushed and pulled. It also gives me a good idea before I turn in a professional illustration of all the ways it can be printed badly, <laughs> which is helpful. You want to make sure that your, your illustration, your poster in this instance, um, doesn't have to be printed exactly right to look good. So it's, it's tolerance for, for variety. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to say uh, Arrange Float All in Windows. Okay. Or, if you like, you can say Window, Arrange, and Tile. And you'll see all the different kind of variations. But if I do Float All in Windows, and I can see the whole thing, because there's a lot of them. And then the ones I think have something interesting, like I really like this, the vintage photo effect. Um, there's something I like about that, I'm going to minimize it. And then the ones where there's nothing great about them, I'm just going to close and not save. And there's this. There's something I like about that. This, that's just weird. It's cross-processing. This is too blown out. Now these can be individually played with and modified, but that's not how I generally use these. This is like everything was dipped in coffee. I like that. This heightens the, um, the textures. Something pretty nice about that, actually. It's a little surprising. Yep. So minimize it. If you get lost, you just say, arrange, float, all in windows to get them back. This one is brings out the texture but doesn't uh, make the contrast extreme. That's very different, but too much. That's kind of nice. Looks Indiana Jones-like. That's sepia. That looks pretty good. That does not look good. That reads okay. It's always important for it to read in black and white. Good to know. Don't like that as much as some of the others. And then we have my original files. All right. So what do I do now with all those I minimized? Well, what I'm going to do is layer them on top and build them in underneath my white border. I don't need that right now. It's going to save my background. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six that I was interested in using. So let's just go in. First is this vintage color effect. I'm simply going to flatten them. So layer, flatten image. Command A, Command C, paste it on top. Then don't save it. Next one. This crazy one already flattened. Command A, Command C, paste it on top. You can see why it's important to have the white border separate. This one is similar but not as strong. Um, flatten. Select all, copy, paste on top. These do great things to photographs as well. Kind of push photographs in all kinds of neat directions. The heightened drama is probably going to be on the very top of what I use. It's already flattened, so just copy it, bring it over. And then I'm going to play with the different opacities until I get what I want. That one, on, on second thought, I don't love it. And then this one is really to desaturate. So I don't need this one. This one I will use. So between three and five, I usually bring over. And I'm going to build these all into my TIFF file. Not my Photoshop file, but my print-ready TIFF. Okay. So